Well, good afternoon. It looks like we have a quorum, and I want to welcome everybody to the ninth Chang Lecture in Art and Medicine. We began this in 2007 with a dual purpose, first to honor the Chang family, and the Chang family are here in a large part. Uh, Chang's epitomize the unity of art and medicine, and that's really what this is all about. The idea of having an annual lecture on this, I think fulfills some of our obligation as a university and as even a little department of urology, our obligation to the public. And I want to thank you, the audience, you represent the public here for this, the public, our intramural public of our medical community and our regional community of Ann Arbor and around Ann Arbor. Uh, we began this in 2007 when the world economy tanked. And I remember Dr. Chang and I were thinking, is anybody going to come to this? And thankfully, many of you did come to it. And uh, next year will be the 10th uh, occasion of it. I'm hoping Pierre Mork and our guests will be back with Jessica next year as well. Uh, we've picked the lecturer for next year and who will be a man from West Virginia, a general surgeon, who will be talking about the Diego Rivera murals and their urologic significance, but I don't want to get into that. <laughs> it's there, by the way, too. <laughs> so at any rate, I want to tell you just a tiny bit about Pierre. Pierre's an old friend. He was last here in Ann Arbor, we think in 1987 or so. Uh, our medical center looks a lot different now. We'll be showing him around tomorrow. He'll be our Duckett professor in pediatric urology. Pierre is a quintessential Frenchman. He's a great surgeon, a great doctor, a great friend, and a painter. He paints almost every day. And we brought him here this year to tell us a little bit about not just art and medicine, but also about geography. So we hope you will stay and linger with us for a little bit afterward. We have a reception. If we have some time, uh, Pierre will be open to questions. And if you get a chance to say hello to him and Jessica, welcome them here to Ann Arbor and hope they'll come back many times. So Pierre, come on, it's your turn. Thank you. Can I have the slide on the screen? Thank you. David, thank you very much for this introduction, and uh, I would like to thank you very much, and Marta, for your wonderful welcome uh, in, uh, in Michigan. This is a great honor for Jessica and myself to be with you today, and uh, I also would like to thank very much uh, uh, Dr. Chang and Dr. Chang's family to support this uh, a conference today because uh, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for your university to um, uh, actually have the possibility to present uh, lectures on arts and medicine. I also would like to, to send Sandy, your uh, personal assistant, who has done a tremendous job to organize this trip from Europe to America. And uh, the last but not the least person I would like to thank is my dearest wife, Jessica, who helped me a lot to uh, prepare this talk. So um, t we, we were very honored when you asked us in 2013 to uh, do this talk on uh, the Chang Lecture on Art me and Medicine, but I have to say I was quite puzzled to choose a subject because uh, I I'm not an expert in arts and I'm probably a very poor surgeon, so the, the combination between art and surgery was quite difficult to do for me. So uh, after many discussions with, with Jessica, we, we thought that it would be a great idea to talk about the painters who uh, actually painted the Rhone River itself and uh, the painters uh, and the doctors we can meet when we uh, uh, go down along the Rhone from its source down to the, the Mediterranean Sea. So. Um, the Chang Lecture, uh, of course, I was intrigued by uh, the family Chang because I didn't know very well who, who was uh, Dr. Chang, but after uh, some Google investigation and after your uh, help, 
uh, I, I realized that your father and probably grandfather and great uncle was was a very famous uh, uh, painter. So I was I'm very honored to to actually talk with the, under the name Chang today, because it's it's uh, he, he was certainly a very significant painter. So I went this afternoon. Uh, could we have the maybe the light down a little bit because I don't know if you see well the slides on the screen, but uh, Jessica and Marta and myself went down to the museum this afternoon and uh, I met your father, so uh, I, I was very proud to see what he did. And I also went on the, the website uh, of the university and I could see some of his paintings which are really uh, beautiful. And uh, this is a couple of, of paintings, uh, photos I took uh, this afternoon in the museum uh, showing what your uh, father did. And uh, uh, I was uh, very, very impressed by the, the, the uh, beauty of these paintings. So the, 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 the idea is actually to sail down the Rhone uh, from its uh, source in Switzerland and to, sl to sail slowly and meet some famous painters and not so famous painters and some personalities who actually worked or uh, performed medicine near uh, this river. So just a quick recap of the uh, Rhone River. Uh, this is here, the Rhone River. It starts in Switzerland, cross the border and then goes straight down to the Mediterranean Sea. You can see here on, on this map in yellow uh, from Switzerland uh, this pass. There is a big lake here in the middle of the Rhone called the Lake Geneva or Lake Lemon. And uh, then we cross the border. We cross an area which is very interesting called Le Buget. And I will uh, show you more about it later. And then we reach my birth town which is Lyon and we cross down along this valley of the Rhone, you, most of you know because of the wine, I suppose, and then we reach Avignon, and this part of the, of the Rhone River is, uh, uh, of course, interested many more painters uh, than the, the first part of, of the river, but we'll, we'll show you what, what sort of paintings we managed to collect uh, along this uh, uh, walk along the Rhone. So we start with the uh, Swiss Rhone, which uh, the, the Rhone, as you probably know, starts from a glacier in an area of Switzerland called the Valais, and then flows down along a valley called the Valley of Sion. And uh, uh, this is this segment of uh, the Rhone in Switzerland, uh, interested actually two uh, English painters uh, the, who captured the first few miles of the river in Switzerland. James Baker Pine, you see on the left, which, who was a painter from Bristol, and of course the famous uh, William Turner, who was from London. And Turner was the son of a wig maker in, in uh, London and uh, joined the Royal Academy of Arts at the age of 14. He traveled a lot in Europe, after the Amiens Peace Treaty, which was signed in 1902 between England, France, Spain, and what we call the Batav Republic, which is now called Holland. And you see here a view of the Lake Geneva, which is, uh, was painted by a famous painter from Geneva called Ferdinand Hodler. And Ferdinand Adler was, uh, belonged to the Expressionist movement. We'll talk again about these various movements later in this talk. But he did a lot of paintings of this area of the Rhone, and you see here the Lake Geneva, which, by the way, is the largest natural lake in Western Europe. And another painter you know, Gustave Courbet, was very interested by this part of uh, the, the Rhone. And the reason is that uh, although bo born in the Jura, which is in the northeast part of France, uh, he uh, belonged to the realist movement and was involved in the anarchist movement in France during uh, the uh, revolution uh, of the Commune in 1871. He was accused to have knocked down a, a famous monument in France 
called La Colonne Vendôme, Vendôme Column, and for that reason he was jailed and asked to pay the damage caused by his action. As he couldn't pay, he fled away to Switzerland and uh, he uh, never managed to pay the bill. And uh, so he painted a lot of part of Switzerland and this segment of the Rhone. And uh, more recently, in 2013, some discussions happened to see if his body could be transferred from Le Jura in France to the Panthéon, which is the famous uh, building in Paris where famous people uh, um, are uh, buried. So this is a view, an interesting view, of uh, the two painters on the left, Ferdinand Hodler, and on the right, uh, um, Gustave Courbet. You can see they are self-portrait. They both look a little bit mad. And uh, it's quite interesting to see that they were both absolutely fantastic painter. And this is another view of uh, a self-portrait from Ferdinand Hodler that you can see in Madrid in uh, the museum, uh, Thyssen Museum. So they were both friends with another guy from Lausanne called François Bossion, who here uh, you can see a couple of paintings of Lake uh, Geneva. Now, other views of the lake by uh, Turner. And Turner stayed quite a long time in Switzerland uh, between 1802 and 1805. And then he traveled to Italy, a little bit of France, and uh, spent so quite a, a long, uh, did a long trip uh, around Europe. Uh, but it is likely that uh, Turner uh, influenced also Courbet. As you can see on these two slides, on the left you have a Turner painting, on the right a Courbet painting. And there are a lot of similarities between the, the, the two uh, paintings. And uh, I'm actually not sure that they knew each other but it is likely that uh, Courbet actually admired a lot uh, Turner's paintings. This is another view of the Lake Clément by uh, Gustave Courbet. And uh, Turner also influenced other uh, painters like uh, uh, François uh, Gravier, who was a painter who painted in this area just after the border with Switzerland, called Le Buget, and he painted many, many ponds and he founded a school of painters called the School of Morestel, Morestel being a little a town near Lyon. And he painted many, many ponds during his uh, uh, life, and uh, these paintings can be seen in many places around the world, especially at uh, Fitzwilliam Museum in, in Cambridge. He was a friend of another painter uh, who called Adolf Appian, and you can see here some of the ponds he painted. They are absolutely beautiful paintings, and uh, they, they, it is actually quite sad that Adolf Appian is so poorly known in paintings, because I think what he did during his career was quite amazing. So this is the Buget. Le Buget is this area just after the Lake Léman, after the border with Switzerland. So we are now in France, and this is a wild part of the world with many lakes. And uh, in Le Buget lived someone you probably know called uh, Gertrude, Gertrude Stein. Gertrude Stein uh, was uh, a, a, a writer, feminist writer, uh, who spent most of her life in France. She came from a very rich Jewish family, American Jewish family, and she bought many paintings of painters who at the beginning of the 20th century were not as famous as they are now. She was a close friend to Picasso, Matisse, and Cézanne, and she bought many of her paintings, and she certainly encouraged the uh, painting movement called the Cubism during this period. She, during the Second World War, she lived in Le Buget, in this area, this wild area, in a small village called Biligna, and uh, she received there many painters and met uh, famous writers like Paul Claudel in this area. Uh, she lived with her brother Leo and her uh, partner Alice Toklas. And there is a lovely book uh, of Alice Toklas on the life of uh, Gertrude Stein. Now, very in Le Buget, there is another lake called the Lake Bourget, uh, which was here painted by. Uh, 
Louis Caron, as you see here, and the Louis Caron form a small group of painters with uh, actually Auguste Ravier, I mentioned before, and uh, they were very close to the school of Barbizon, uh, which uh, was formed by Corot in the f f forest of Fontainebleau. The Lake Bourget inspired many poets, and you see here Alphonse de Lamartine, who is a famous French poet, but he was also a novelist, a playwright, and a politician, and had multiple sentimental affairs, which inspired his poems, and uh, eventually he married an English woman, Marian Eliza Birch. He was a member of the uh, French Academy, and he was a Republican and never managed to become president of Republic in France against Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. And uh, here is one of his famous verse, which is which found beautiful, which in French is un seul être vous manque et tout est dépeuplé, which can be translated in English as one single person is missing and the whole world looks empty. Here you see a view of this Lake Bourget who inspired Alphonse de Lamartine by Communal. Communal, Joseph Communal,